Hey everybody, I'm BC, and welcome to my basic building guide for Planet Nomads. Uh, in this guide, I'm going to explain the building system a little bit to you, help you understand how it works a little bit, and show you the basics of building, how inventories work, and conveyor systems. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with uh, the basics. So when you go ahead and you place your first block down, as you see in the upper left there, it tells you how much resources you need and how much resources you have. Uh, one on the... All right, yeah, uh, resources, the top upper one is actually the weight, and that's going to be the current weight of the frame. So in survival, when you first build a block, or place any block, you get a basic frame, and it tells you right there the weight. Now I need two more Mark One plating, and you always got to make sure you have your st stuff in your inventory when you do this, or be somewhere near uh, item dispenser, which is usually about 40, 40 meters. So then you just use your, your multi-tool, and uh, I don't know if you can notice it right away, but I'll take it out. Uh, you'll see a circle around the reticle, and you got to make sure that circle fills up, and that just lets you know that it's complete. So then, now, Planet Nomads actually uses a grid system, and I can ex show you this with uh, small blocks. Everything's based around the size of one armor block, and as you can see, it'll snap within certain grid spacing, and in the case of base foundation, it's an 8x8 eight eight and too high. Now, placing blocks, uh, you have complete freedom in where you can place the blocks. As you can see, you can place it anywhere. Uh, you'll see the, or the green line there. If you push X, that'll change your rotation, uh, rotation axis. And then using the mouse wheel, you can actually rotate the block. Uh, for instance, you can play it sideways if you want. You can go upside down, go back this way. You can have it down that way, and so on and so forth. And that includes placing other blocks on top of other blocks. As long as you have a flat surface, you're allowed to build wherever you want. Uh, again, you always have to make sure that the block is completely finished by using your multi-tool. And it gives you, you know, a lot of freedom in what you can build. There are certain blocks that uh, you can't always build in certain areas, and this just happens to be one of them, the corner. Uh, as you can see, I can place on the edge, I can place on the bottom, I can place on the outside but I can't place on the inside. Uh, it's something new that they changed in the building system. If it's not gonna, if you can't place it, it doesn't snap anywhere, so it just floats red until it finds a spot where it can connect and it'll snap to it. So that is that. Uh, there are, like I said, there's other exceptions, like um, I don't think printers can actually be built on top. Uh, hang on a sec. All right, let's go into the grid system a little bit more. Uh, what happens is when you place your first your first block, that creates a centralized grid. This grid will be completely separate than any other grid that you have out here. For instance, that thing over there is its own grid. That thing over there is its own grid. My lab is its own grid. Uh, this grid over here will extend further back because I have miners hooked up to conveyors, and we'll get that to, into that in a minute. Uh, what happens when you first start placing grids, or when you start building with grids? is it's creating a, a larger structure. So as I build, this grid gets bigger, and if there's nothing around, then the, the game chunk actually loads with it. So if I go ahead and build this right into the ground, so let's actually get down here and try to get the snap if I can. Like so. Now that's actually something I forgot to mention too. With the building in this game, you don't have to like point to where you want. As you can see, the block hovers. So if you have it hovering in the right spot, it will try to snap to whatever you can. So it's actually snapping to these blocks even though the reticle isn't directly on it. And it comes in handy when you're trying to get into those awkward, hard reach places. Uh, something you can do too is you can go into third person mode if you want to build upwards. And like so. But anyways, back to uh, the whole grid system here. Uh, again, using right-click to take it apart, you get all your resources back. So if I go ahead and fill all this in, this is cre technically creating one structure. If I were to take this block out, it's going to separate these, these two structures completely. Nothing, there's nothing you can do about actually getting it to reconnect. If I go ahead and place this block back, because I placed it on this, this block here, if I take this one out, it drops it will not connect. So it is a can be a bit of an issue sometimes, but you know, you learn to work around it, you build an alliance, and this is always a big issue with conveyor systems. 
So let's go ahead and uh, start getting into the inventories. So I'm going to go ahead and place a printer here. And I'm going to place a small container here. Now, because I am staying on the same grid and nothing is going to happen to this grid because of the fact that it's one solid block, I sh will not have any issues with conv conveyors. Uh, what else do I want to put down here? Well, I will add the other thing in a minute. So, to connect the conveyors, you can just go ahead and just connect them to the ports and it helps if I have the right, the right block. So, just go ahead like that, like so. And then just a couple of elbows will bring it down. Like so. Now these will connect, as I said, because they're on this, the same grid. If I had this all the small blocks and I cut it right down the middle and then rejoined it, it will not work. So we actually have to get power. I have... I was going to place a generator. Uh, give me a moment. Actually, this would be a good example to show, uh, explain how the conveyor systems work. Uh, the conveyor systems work in a way as long as everything's connected every machine can access every inventory hooked up to the system it doesn't matter how many containers how many conveyors you have as long as everything's connected it will work now I'm gonna go ahead and start building off off grid here and I want to place a for instance well, I want to place a generator and I want to place a miner um, when working with conveyors off grid you have to build in a line you can't build here and then build over there and try to connect them in the middle it just isn't gonna connect so we go ahead and just place some conveyors down uh, for the generator. I'm going to put an elbow down because I want to, in order to access that inventory, I have to have power to it. So again, I'm going to use X to rotate my conveyors and just use the floating snap to get right in there. And then I will place my generator. The generator does have conveyor ports. You can actually snap it to those ports, just like so. Now if I go ahead and complete all this, now as you can see, the generator does not have any fuel. I have some fuel on me. I do have to place a switchboard, which is going to be here. Uh, I do have another guide for the power system right after this one. If if you need to, if you want to figure out the power, how the power works a little bit better, but I'm just going to go ahead and do that and that. So now, as you can see, it has no fuel. It's not generating any power. Because this generator is hooked up to this box here, all I have to do is drag uranium into it, and it has fuel. Because it has all, if this is empty and needs fuel, it will look any, for env any inventories and pull out any fuel that's in there. And I had supplies on, that's why you don't see it. So there we go. So now the printer has inventory, or power, so we can use that. Now, the inventories, you can't access all the inventories from the machines themselves. From the containers, you can. So we have compact container one, that's this container here. We have medium printer, three, medium 3D printer, which is this one over here. And then we have the generator over here. So I can place this into the generator, into the generator's inventory, and it's there. I just can't do the same from the generator over there. Now, for the miners. The miners are basically the same thing you do it build it the same way as you build the of course that's wrong block, block, wrong block same way as the, the generator you go ahead and you place your conveyors down and just build in a line oops i'm so used to being in survival late or creative lately you just right click and the block goes but yeah so i go ahead place a few more blocks down or conveyors one more just for sake of it and then to place the miner it does have to be a certain depth in the ground where do they have that number zero and again you have to use the sort of the snapping it is technically snapping to the grid even though it's not placing it's just letting you know the alignment and then just make sure that it's connected right to that conveyor port go ahead and finish up our conveyors So, I gotta grab some power if I can get to it. And now we have power. So, as you can see, it's running. Uh, if you never used the miners before, if you click on the items, it'll gray it out and it'll prevent it from being mined. You can also uncheck this to keep the resources in the miner and preventing it from putting it into any, any empty inventory. If a machine 
runs out of inventory space like the printer here if you have all 10 of these slots filled up and it's still producing it will automatically place it into the next available inventory slot in the line which would be the small container and then again same thing with the oh that's an autosave sorry about that uh, again with the printer in the generator you can actually see the monitor in the inventory box and that has been my building guide for Planet Nomads. I hope it helped you all out. If you enjoyed watching it, don't forget to leave me a like, and I will see you all next time.